Hello and welcome back to another video um, on an update for KB Bank. This O Gauge Railway um, that I've been busy building for well, it seems ages now. I'm building it is the uh, the optimum word. Um, just for those who are new to the channel, a quick recap was that uh, I built the workshop, which is oh, uh, that way, um, in 2019. Uh, that's got the storage hidden for this layout uh, or some storage for the, this layout at least and of course it's a workshop so i can do all things on um on engines etc in there um and then we come to the main shed which i'm in now uh, i completed earlier this year um and it took me nearly well over a year to get to where i am now um and where the stage that we're actually up to now is, um, well, this is phase one that I'm in now. So fa phase one is actually the building of the storage area, which is underneath the main layout. Um, all the track for that is down now. Um, the points are in, and I'm busy just putting servos on the, um, the actual points. And hopefully we can then get to a stage where we can actually run trains in and out from the storage on the main layout which is on underneath it's about 250 mil lower than the main layout um and then you'll be able to send trains from there in and out so that gives us plenty of storage for stock anyway and then you'll have the facility to run up incline on both sides of the shed onto the main layout so that's how you uh, take trains on and off the main layout. So that's where we're up to now. So let's get on with the video and uh, I'll see you later on. Right, you join me in the workshop now. I thought I'd show you how I actually set up the servos to work with um, all the points. So first of all, you have to have the carriage to put your servo in, something like that. Or you can have something like that. Well, that's a mega point one, but other uh, suppliers are available. Um, so first of all, you need a wire which goes through there, and that will go into the point and move the actual point there. So, and you also need a pair of Z bend pliers, which puts a Z bend likes of that something like that in the uh, in the wire then you need a servo only in order to put the servo in aluminum channel like that you have to cut one of the legs off there because normally with, with a servo you've got the two little legs little arms sitting either side there you see so you cut one of them off you then feed that through, usually go for somewhere in the middle because of the, uh, the right sort of leverage. You drill the hole in the appropriate place, feed that through, and then you just push this into the channel. And the channel just binds on the servo. And then you line up the arm with the little micro switch there which will move in accordance to when the uh, servo moves like that and then if you use a micro switch of one's a common which is the green and frogs are green so it goes to the frog and then you will await out which way round it needs to be so that's the negative and, and positive so that that's how it that, that's actually done well, if you wanted to put a servo into one of these, that's very similar. The higher part of the servo goes in there, thread that through, like so that. That way around there. Just feed that through there. It is quite tight, so you might actually have to trim this a bit. No, it does go eventually. 
in there and then just get some little screws you do get some little leg cell tapping screws for this arrow so put them and then tighten them down like so that there and then another one there and just tighten that down on the other side and then you just need to put the arm in Not down there right you put the arm in there like that so now you need to set to center the servo right so i see you need to servo the, the uh, servo center the servo so bring in your servo tester this is something i've made up but this actual tester is available i've got it off ebay and get the battery holder and just put a switch on it and away you go so if you do that turn it on you see, you see the nice little light there on it so what this do, allows you to operate servo from the control of on it so put that in there so, and then you can press this so it's centered so that is now centered that servo so what you'll need to fit an arm on it so in this case we'll fit the small arm going upwards which is like so that there and then we have to put the center screw in the middle if not to lose the screw And that's basically that now you get a piece of wire which is what i prepared earlier not quite but a piece of wire chop it to approximately the right sort of length z bend pliers and i'll put your z bend in it and uh, actually i've done that slightly wrong put that in in there and that would go down through the hole that would stick through your board there and go into the actual track I'll tell you what i'll do that that correctly then just take this off take the arm off there arm off thread this on first down through the appropriate hole which is the middle one because your servo is centered that's vertical so now you can uh, disconnect that for a second move the arm out the way and get your screw in right. fit on our screw Reconnect this and that will go back to center then orange to the white So now if you press that onto auto You'll see see that move It's an adjusting that would which you would do before you fit it So we'll take that off and that's basically how I actually uh, set up the, the servos before fitting to the board anyway. So now we'll just see what the light one actually fitted under the board. Right, here's our carriage that we prepared earlier in the workshop. So we, I've got fitting this now. So underneath the uh, double slip, and find a way and the first shot out of that. So what I do now is because you need to get underneath because if you get a pair of, of these they're like forceps or, and they just lock so that just holds the pin and then you go under the board and screw them screw them up so we do that now
Right, so there's the one that I've already fitted, and there's the uh, one that we've just put in position there. We need to screw that up, but I can't do that holding the camera at the same time. So you get the idea, just put two screws in that, and that'll be in the right position there anyway. So uh, I have now connected the point up, and just so as you can see it, um, I've just took a little bit of yellow tubing on the wire anyway. So I'll switch me, got my... Uh, Test it connected up there and I'll switch that on. So now what you will hear is I've got the continuity tester, which is this uh, something I made made up from an old uh, telephone switchboard to sound as uh, as an old telephone switchboard. So when we get continuity, it comes on. So everything here is wired black to the back. Um, so that means that, that the micro switch should be wired. So once uh, it's switched that way, it should be black. So I've got my wires connected up with that on the black and the other side's on the frog. So when the micro switch changes, we should get a sound anyway. So if I move the, the point over now, so that means it's, it's wired correctly. So we'll change it back in. So that's the beauty of the servo tester because you set everything up before you actually connect it into the main control anyway. So that's the, this uh, point is now set up. All you need to do is put wire, all these wires in correctly and then put the servo leads all the way round, round over to the other side, um, which is where I'm going to put the servo controller anyway. Right, so all, all these servo wires are moved around so this is our servo controller which is uh to my mega points and all the wires are all, all underneath here to be connected up but that's something that i'll do in the next couple of minutes anyway right so all the servos are now connected up to the servo driver there there's 10 in total not just all the wire in there that's all just temporary eventually it will all go into a panel now this is networked up to the button board which is all the way down here so this is numbered one to eight not nine to sixteen in this case we're only using the ten buttons well, if you press, um, if we press button number three there, and you'll see the zero move or four and three again. So yeah, we've got control of all our points now, which uh, makes operating quite useful. Um, the object will be just to test and test to make sure everything run smoothly and there's no problem because obviously once you put the top layout on there um, it makes access a lot more difficult underneath so all my wiring is complete for the storage level uh, this is just showing you board number one uh, the two units you can see there, down on the bottom left are reverse loop units because there are two reverse loops one for the Low storage level and one which goes up to the access to the main layout on one side. Right, so hopefully that explains a bit of actually where we're up to and thank you for watching this far um, I hope you uh, you enjoy the content and we'll click and subscribe and hopefully we can grow the, the, the channel um, and hopefully next time the next update I'll do we'll have plenty of trains running in and out 
of the, the shed and then after that we'll consider putting the actual top on on here mm -hmm. um, and then we can actually start building the main layouts but I think that's going to be sort of in the new year somewhere like that so thank you for watching